Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson eight of the chemistry one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, so in order to ace this problem, it's important that we have a good understanding of what a buffer is and how a buffer solution works. Now, a buffer solution is always going to made up, be made up of a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. Let me explain what I mean by that. We know that acids tend to be proton donors. Acids like to give up protons. So a lot of the times, you'll see a generic acid represented like this, HA, where H is the proton or that H plus ion that's attached and A is the rest of the acid. Now, as you can see here, an acid can give up its proton. Maybe we mix it in water, it breaks apart. And then you have that proton broken off and you have A minus, just the rest of the acids that's left behind. And this is referred to as the conjugate base. Because remember, bases like to accept protons rather than donate them. Bases like to pick them up. And theoretically, this A minus, this conjugate base, could pick up a proton and then go back to being an acid again. But that only happens with weak acids and weak bases. Here's why. Imagine you have a strong acid like HCl and you mix that in water. That, think of that strong acid as being strong, as being really good at doing what acids do. And what acids do is give up protons. So all of that HCl is going to want to break apart, give up its protons until we have a bunch of H plus and a bunch of Cl minus. And because that's such a strong acid, that Cl minus is not going to pick up an H plus and become HCl again. This arrow isn't going to move in the opposite direction. That's the problem with having a strong acid, is it tends to only move in one direction. It only wants to give up. A strong base is the same way, but opposite. It only wants to pick up protons. It doesn't want to give up protons. But if we have a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid, we start to see that this reaction can work either way. A weak acid might be comfortable, it will be comfortable giving up its proton, but then its conjugate base, this A- minus that is left behind, would be pretty comfortable picking up a proton and going back to being that weak acid. We get a little fluctuation there. And that's really important to a buffer system because with a buffer system, we're trying to maintain the pH. Keep that pH from changing and getting too high or too low. Here's an example. Right here, I've got a bunch of weak acid. You can see it's got two H's attached to it. This would be the conjugate base after it's given up one of those protons. And I've got an even mix here of the weak acid and the conjugate base. Now look, if I add H plus into the solution, let's say I'm adding a strong acid and all of a sudden there's a bunch more protons in the solution that might change the pH. These conjugate bases right here are totally comfortable picking up those H's and becoming weak acids. They're totally comfortable picking up those extra H's and the, moving in this direction, in this equation. The same thing could happen in the opposite sense. If we add some strong base all of a sudden, well, these weak acids are totally comfortable giving up their protons to react with the OH- and form water. So once again, that pH isn't going to change a ton. Now that we have an understanding of what a buffer solution is and how it works, let's go back to this problem and see what we can figure out. All right, so looking at this question, we want to know which of the following steps will result in a buffer solution. Now remember, buffer solution is going to be weak acid with its conjugate base or a weak base mixed with its conjugate acid. That's going to be a buffer solution. Let's start with this problem right here. Adding an amount of strong acid and half as much strong base. Well, we've got a problem right there because remember, we want a weak acid, not a strong acid in our buffer solution. And so we know right away, this solution right here is going to be incorrect. In fact, I can see a similar problem down here. Again, we're working with a strong acid in its conjugate base as opposed to a weak acid in its conjugate base. So we're going to go ahead and cross these off because we know that we need a weak acid in this buffer solution. A strong acid isn't going to do the trick because we won't be able to stabilize that pH as well. That strong acid, once it goes over and gives up its H+, is not going to be willing to take it back up. Okay, let's look at these other two options right here adding an amount of weak acid and half as much strong base, or adding equal amounts of a weak acid and a strong base. Now, a strong base really likes to take protons. It's really good at taking protons, right? So if we had equal amounts of a weak acid and a strong base, what do you think is going to happen? Well, that strong base is going to yank all the protons off of all those weak acids. So we started with weak acid, but we'll be left with only the conjugate base. And that's not what we want because we don't have that balancing act there. So this is going to be incorrect. On the other hand, 
if we add an amount of weak acid and then add half as much strong base, that strong base is going to yank protons from half of the molecules of weak acid because we're only adding half as much strong base as we have weak acid. So half of those weak acid molecules, because the protons are being yanked off by the strong base, are going to become the conjugate base. And then we'll have the balance that we want. We'll have half and half. So this is going to be our correct answer. Let's go ahead and check it out. Awesome. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel or enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at mcatselfprep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.